The October 2019 Forbidden List didn't really come as a surprise to Team The Cali Effect. The only real surprise was the date. Why did it have to come out today? I had so many video ideas. Regardless, in this video we'll be going over the cards that are banned and what impact will this have on the meta. I'm The Cali Effect and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then make sure you destroy that subscribe button, but more importantly, go at that notification bell because, well, we just too strong. So without further ado, I present to you a complete synopsis on the October 2019 Forbidden List. Now, if there's anything that you can take from this Forbidden List is that Konami is paying very close attention to what tops in our meta scene. Decks like Orcus and Sky Strikers received the heaviest of hits. Decks like Orcus and Sky Strikers were the only decks to be hit. While decks like Dragons did get a nerf, but also got a hidden buff. I think that this list is fairly balanced, and I want to give a mad shout out to all of the staff out there that is working on Forbidden List. This is pretty good. Starting off with the Forbidden cards, we're going to be talking about Nightmare Mermaid. Now, people were arguing that Orcus Nightmare should be banned to kill off Orcus, but that isn't really the problem. The problem with Orcus isn't the strategy itself. It's actually fair, balanced, and fun. But the genuine problem was the fact that Orcus was allowed to be played in so many hybrid decks that you can just play anything you want and then splash an Orcus engine. Hitting the Nightmare Mermaid is the problematic card because Nightmare Mermaid has been proven to be problematic quite a few times in the Yu-Gi-Oh meta. I really like this hit because it does tone down the Orcus strategy while also allowing Orcus to still be a very competitive deck. And yes, the deck is still really good. The next card, Guard Dragon Argapain, just another card that we talked about on the perfect forbidden list. I went against Guard Dragon Argapain, but I can see why it was banned. Being able to special summon a free dragon monster from your extra deck to your side of the field just by playing the dragon concept is just a little powerful. Now granted, the only reason why the Guard Dragon Argapain is so powerful is because we do have a lot of generic dragon monsters running around that could summon themselves to their side of the field for free. If you take away those cards, then the Guard Dragon engine becomes completely balanced. But then you have to start to realize which one is more of the problem. Guard Dragon Argapain, which would be easily abused the more dragon cards that are made, or the free dragon cards that don't really do anything much without Argapain. I think banishing the Argapain is the correct answer, and it's unfortunate for Dragon players, but don't worry, they'll adapt. You got Super Rejuvenation to 3. Moving on to Limited, Sky Striker Mecha Multi Roll is on this list. And this is the exact hit that we were talking about, not only in our Perfect Forbidden list, but also in our Prediction list that now I'm never going to release because it's dangerously close to being alike, but it also made me extremely angry. Multi-roll to one is the next probable step for Sky Strikers. You've already hit all of the recursion cards with multi-roll being the one and also Kagari being limited. Hitting the Medical Widow Anchor stymies the interaction that you get on your opponent's turn. And now since Medical Widow Anchor is limited to one, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage isn't as powerful. I mean, think about it. Engage is normally used to get your best cards, what used to be multi-roll and Widow Anchor. Not only do you have Widow Anchor at one, meaning that you have to be very careful with setting it to your side of the field with your multi-roll, you also don't have as many great targets to search with your Mobilize Engage. People have been claiming that Mobilize Engage should go to one as well. I mean, look, Konami is obviously not in the business to killing decks, they just want the meta to be fair and balanced. That's it for Limited, so if you guys want to comment down below in the comment section about how trash Konami has made this list, though I strongly disagree with you, if you're a competitive player, you see the reason why some of these cards are hit, but go ahead and rage vent, talk about how these cards should be limited, or these cards should have come off the list. Pretty much else from there, the other hits on this list or the other cards being brought off this list don't really make a competitive impact. That is right, we are approximately five minutes into this video and I've already said my first hot take. None of the cards after the limited section of this list don't matter. Yu-Gi-Oh! is extremely balanced and none of these decks will take over the format. Moving to semi-limited, we get Dark Arm Dragon to two. Now there has to be a moment of silence for that 20 minutes of me contemplating should I buy that ultimate rare Dark Arm Dragon for $115 knowing that it's probably $250 right now. 
Dark Realm Dragon the two is almost mimicking the OCG list. While they did get three, us having two Dark Arms, I'll take that. I'm not gonna complain about it. It's very powerful. I don't see Dark Arm making a huge impact into the meta, but it definitely is a secret boost for decks that can manipulate their graveyard, i.e. Orcist. That's it for Semi-Limited. I've seen a couple of comments that want cards like Terraforming to Semi-Limited, and while I don't think that that's a terrible idea, I don't think that it's a great idea either. Let me know which cards should be semi-limited, what other cards should come down or up on the list. Moving on to the unlimited, these cards do not matter. Well, except for my baby, Shadow Construct, that is newly unlimited on this list. You can play as many copies as you're allotted to play, so three, in your main board, extra deck, or side deck alike. Shadow Construct the three does breathe life into the Shadow strategy, but one would have to wonder, is it a little too late for Construct to actually make an impact? The answer could almost be no, because Performer the Age Damage Juggler is at two on this list, so you guys could already expect the Kala Effect to be concocting some really good shenanigans in his head to make Shadows competitive. My baby is back. Uh, it's a shame that I moved on to another purple girl now. Super Rejuvenation to three is probably the biggest surprise. Other than the time of the list actually dropping, we did not expect Super Rejuvenation to come off the list because it's Super Rejuvenation. There's like no need to have cards like that off the list. Super Rejuvenation to three is definitely something for the future meta. I've been hearing Dragon Maids being really good because of Super Rejuvenation to three, so I think only time will tell. Aether the Heavenly Monarch to three. I mean, everybody did see this coming. Unfortunately, Aether to three isn't the only thing Monarchs need. We need that Pantheism to three as well in order for Monarchs to be somewhat decent. I mean, Aether is just gonna piss Monarch players off. They want that Pantheism as well. I think Aether won't have any meta implications whatsoever. Unfortunately, Pantheism is still at one, but hey, I mean, one step closer, two steps back, three steps forward. You're still in the same spot, aren't we? On to my next hot take when I start talking about Elemental Hero Stratos to three and off the forbidden list. It's another one of the predictions that we got completely correct. And I don't think Elemental Hero Stratos to three changes the concept of heroes. Here's another hot take. Heroes are not the best deck in the format. They're, they're not good. They're, they're kind of bad. Look, so as long as heroes lack that great first going board, I mean, Dark Lord is cute and all, but you don't have anything else to back up with it. And Evil Hero Malicious Bane in the Duster Gold is a great going second part, but you don't need three straddles to accomplish this. Granted, Stratos does make the deck a lot more consistent and allows you to deal with back row, but Stratos isn't what the deck needs. The deck needs a extra deck monster that helps you going first, or just a really badass card that helps you going first. You need something. Destiny Hero Malicious to three is screaming Teledad, ladies and gentlemen. Dark Arm Dragon to two, Destiny Hero Malicious to three. I remember the last time we had that, it was around 2009, and Teledad reigned supreme. I'm really excited to be tinkering with those dark Teledad-like decks. Unfortunately, I, I don't think that they'll do much, but it'll still be really fun to mess with, especially inside of this new format. Destiny Hero Malicious to three is a huge boost for heroes. I think that this is actually the more underrated boost than the Elemental Hero Stratos, but uh, it's a great boost for Dark Warrior decks, but more importantly, that hero strategy. Chaos Emperor Dragon to three is just progression. I mean, it wasn't even seeing play at two. Putting it to three, they weren't really doing much. I do like that Black Luster Soldier and Chaos Emperor Dragon are now at three. That's really cool to see some type of weird chaos deck going around. Unfortunately, with Eclipse Wyvern still being banned, I mean, I just don't see nothing else happening. Royal Tribute to three. Now this actually might be a little spicy because Grave Keepers are a lot better than what people think. You can summon that big fusion monster to your side of the build, get rid of those Grave Keeper monsters out of your hand, and now your opponent has to watch out. Because if they are playing a monster mash deck, you can Royal Tribute and get everything out of their hand into the graveyard. Not only to say, Necrovalli is still a really powerful card in today's Yu-Gi-Oh, preventing the opponent from pretty much touching the graveyard whatsoever. I'm not saying that Royal Tribute will put Gravekeepers over the map, they just are a lot better than ever before with three Royal Tribute. Oh, and they also have a Vanity's Emptiness. I, I don't. I think people forgot that they have a Vanity's Emptiness. Granted, this is all reliant on Necro Valley, but I mean, seriously, they're, they're better. You can't really argue with that. Shereed Strategist of the Necros is a little laughable, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, <laughs> when it was semi-limited, it was unlimited. Nobody played three. So the fact that it is now at three, 
we can just move on to the last card. Last is a card that I think is super secret, sexy, and hidden is Insector Dragonfly to three. Insector fully unlocked off the forbidden list opens up so many opportunities. Pick up your cocoons of Ultra Evolutions now because the Cali Effect is, I'm dead set on breaking Insectors in this meta. They are going to be insane. That's pretty much it for the October 2019 Forbidden List. I do think that the meta does change, but just like 50 Cent says, it's just a little bit. We ain't doing too much changing, at least until Chaos Impact comes around. Now, if you guys would like to see the best decks of the format, go ahead and love this video up, show it some love, and then post down below in the comment section, Cali Effect, what are the best decks past the Forbidden List? Also, what decks are you guys excited to see on this channel because of the Forbidden List? Which strategies do you think that I should be putting on the channel next? Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you do, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really did, consider joining our Patreon, bros. They spicy as hell. Also, a mad shout out to our newest Patreons, Jared Lorman and Jared Frutos. Welcome to the clan. Make sure you add yourself to Discord as well as much as me so I can get you the top dog so you can take advantage of all your rewards. We have some really cool surprises coming up for you guys on the Discord. So even if you guys aren't a part of the Patreon, go ahead and add yourself as well. Please like, comment, subscribe. Most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.